Hello! Welcome to Node Spaghetti. I'm Joseph. Today we'll be doing part two of my Octopus Character Creation series in Blender 2.81. And we're going to be making this gal right here. Eight tentacles, two big eyes, one giant bulbous head. And as I stated in the last episode, I've been compiling Blender 2.81 from source, so you might see a few bugs. Rest assured that many, if not all of them, have been fixed for the final release. Now without further ado, let's get started. And right off the bat, I'm going to add a cube. I'm going to give it a shrink wrap modifier to shrink to the surface of the octopus sculpt, and a displacement modifier so that I can see what I'm doing while I'm working. What I'm doing is I'm retopologizing the tentacles of the octopus because the sculpt left each one of them a little bit different. I got the proportions right, which is what I was aiming at, but each, each tentacle's got a slightly different form and we can't have that. We want them to be consistent and consistently good. And you'll notice that the tentacle itself is symmetrical. And I'm doing that because I plan on reusing it later on. Not only that, but I will be using the mirror modifier to really nail down the form and, and get it correct. Right now all I'm aiming at is getting a new base mesh for a re-sculpt. And in the second sculpt, the tentacles are going to be the same size, the same shape, the same length. And I'm going to be able to space them out nice and evenly because I've got these models. And the second sculpt, I can focus on the connection between the tentacles and the octopus's head. And here's another one of my dumb mistakes. I forgot to put the end cap on the tentacle, so just got to do this over real quick. No harm done. For all of these art making of videos that I'll, that I'll be doing, I'm planning on doing an aftermath post-mortem video for each one, where I look into all the mistakes I made and all the things I learned, and try to improve the workflow that I use so that next time I can do even faster, higher quality work. And this is something I don't see other channels doing very often, and I hope it'll make my channel unique and interesting. You can probably hear the greatly improved audio this week, and I, I really take quality very seriously. I'm looking forward to finding ways to continue improving the quality of these videos. So if you have any ideas for me, just let me know in the comments. Thank you. Now with these new tentacles in place, I'm ready to rebuild the base mesh. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get rid of the old ones in the sculpt by selecting the vertices that I don't want and pressing the F key to replace them with a face. Blender's smart enough to know which vertices I want to keep and which ones I want to throw away. And the awesome Dentopo sculpting will just triangulate that giant Dingon, so it doesn't really matter that it produces bad geometry. Now the difficulty of this part of the sculpt is that I'm connecting the head of the octopus to its tentacles, uh, arms, if you will. Now, I'm used to sculpting human arms, which have these big bones in the middle and these giant heaps of muscles all schlopped up around the bone. Now, it turns out that octopuses don't actually have any bones, and their muscles are... they're really weird. The tentacle is something called a muscular hydrostat, which is... The closest thing humans have is our tongues. Its arms are a lot like a human tongue. And right here we're going to see one of my favorite things about using Blender. A quick flick of the wrist with the pie menu, and I've gone from sculpt mode into edit mode. All of Blender's awesome sculpting tools and all of Blender's awesome modeling tools are right there together, and I don't have to choose between them. I have access to all of them all the time. As I said before, octopuses don't have any bones. One of the biggest challenges in this character was making her look appealing but also formless. People tend to be most interested in characters that look like humans. They always notice a mouth and some eyes. And the octopus doesn't have a mouth on its face. It's underneath its face, between its tentacles. Ugh. So eventually I was able to find a nice happy medium between the formless, weird shape of this invertebrate creature and more human-like features. The second topic this week is optimism. And I'm going to start out by talking about how dreadfully pessimistic and cynical I can be. The internet has brought me immediate access to all kinds of information. 
And so it's usually only a matter of minutes before I find out that some politician's statements had some factual errors or that some celebrity is cheating on their spouse. People's opinions are more readily accessible than any other kind of information, thanks in no small part to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, social media, all of that. And of course, people don't bother to share their opinions unless they're upset about something. So it's hard to spend any time online without hearing how dreadfully stupid some public figure is. I look around me, and everyone is at each other's throats. It should be no surprise, then, that I'm usually pessimistic and cynical. It's hard not to be in response to the bevy of conflicting ideas and opinions I encounter on a daily basis. If everyone has an angle, is there anyone I can trust? And that's when I realize I'm listening to all the wrong voices. Today, I want to take some time to be thankful for what I have, and to be thankful for how much better the world is today than it's been in the past. And finally, I'd like to remind myself to see the good in things and to be hopeful for the future. Back in Blender, we have a reminder that I am in fact using beta software. That's okay, it's easy to recover. Right here we see that the boolean modifier has left some weird artifacts, but thanks to the new voxel remesh, I don't care. Don't even have to spend any time cleaning that up. So while I'm sculpting this, I've got a few minutes to talk about all of the great things that have happened in the world in the past 50 years. A man has walked on the surface of the moon, and the internet has revolutionized the world economy, bringing a new way to escape poverty to millions of people that never had a chance before. In the field of medicine, We've got the measles vaccine, the first successful liver and heart transplants, the invention of synthetic insulin, the first artificial heart, the Human Genome Project, and AIDS prevention, treatment, and therapy. Scientists have even found ways to restore sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and life to a heart that is no longer beating. True modern medical miracles. Back in Blender for a second. Throughout the course of this project, I've been careful to keep my file clean. I do that by creating a collection called Trash and hiding it in the viewport, so that whenever I move an object to it, it disappears right away. Later on, I go in and I delete everything in the collection. That keeps my file size small and my Blender's performance nice and fast. You can see me throwing away the old sculpt right here. Remember when I said I'd be reusing those tentacles? Now the time has come for that. And once again, I'm going to do this wrong before I do it right. And I hope you're not getting sick of watching me do this, because it's going to happen two or three more times. I just needed to make sure that I could get the spacing right with a tentacle of that width. Right around here, I do something that I don't think I've ever seen anybody else do. I create a face between all of those edges that I want to straighten out and make even. And then I scale them down along the normal of the face that I created. And of course, because it was a disgusting ingon, I delete the face in the end. You'll also see me making liberal use of the 3D cursor. I just love the 3D cursor. It's so fast to click on where I want the pivot point to be and just have it right there. Much, much faster than using a widget to move it around. Ugh. Now I have a few more things to be thankful for today. The literacy rate in the world has gone from 12% in 1820 to 86% in 2016. In fact, just about all of Europe, North America, North Asia and East Asia has got 95% or higher literacy rates. The number of people in the world living on less than $2 a day has decreased rapidly over the past 50 years. It's at an all-time low, and it continues to decrease. I'm trying to look at the world in light of these facts and many others like them. It's so good to be alive today. I've been particularly unhappy recently because I feel like my many commitments are holding me back. I rarely take the time to be thankful that I can even fret over such a small thing. Maybe I'm so focused on the work I'd rather be doing that I can't count my blessings. It's good just to have work to do. I'm young, and there's still time for me to chase the future. And the future is so bright. If the world has changed so much since 1970, what can we expect to see by 2070? I'm thrilled at the endless possibilities stretched out in the world to come. Life is an adventure, and I'm so lucky to be on this journey. I'm tired of spending my time listening to voices that complain. I'm tired of hearing my own voice call out loud enough to deafen the chorus of voices chanting beneath it. It's darkening my thought and poisoning my relationships with others. 
It's cutting me off from the present, and it's chilling my dreams for the future. But life is so, so good. I'm not going to waste what I've been given. When my life is over, I want to rest, knowing that mine was a voice of restoration. Instead of tearing people apart, I want to bring people together. So I'll square my shoulders, push out my chest, and march headlong into this brave, bright adventure that God has given me. I'm going to make the future better than today. And today is, after all, a good day. I know this comes off as more than a little bit melodramatic, but I have to exaggerate. Most of the time, I exaggerate in exactly the opposite way. My thoughts always seem to move towards worst-case scenarios. Innocent mistakes become sources of condemnation and blame. Just to balance things out, I need to flip the script every once in a while. Instead of complaining, I'm going to try and be thankful. I think this is the first step to making meaningful changes in the world. I can't do great things without first changing myself. And I can't believe in the future without believing in today, and the people whose lives have been spent striving for tomorrow's long since past. I know it seems more than a little bit far-fetched, even unreasonable. But if I strive for the best thing I can think of, the worst case is that I'll only make it part of the way. And that would still be a good thing. Anyways, this isn't just about me. I'd like for you to leave a comment about something you're thankful for today, and something you'll do to make tomorrow just a little bit better. So at this point, I am retopologizing the under part of the octopus, between all the tentacles near where the mouth is. This whole part of the process is a little bit awkward. Anyways, I'm using the Loop Tools add-on to circularize the middle so that all of the vertices in the center part are evenly spaced apart. And I'm using the excellent Volume Preserving Smoothing add-on by Bartosz Stipperik, I think is how you say his name. I really, I don't know how to pronounce it, that was the best I can do. Anyhow, the add-on is a lot like the Relax add-on, except it, it's a lot more predictable in the way it behaves, it works in a lot more situations. Um, in fact, I haven't been able to get it to give me any kind of errors or bugs. It's, it's, it's really great. It's one of my most used modeling tools, and I recommend it super, super highly. I paid $8 for it. Bartosh asked for 5 and I wish I'd spent 20 It's that good. So I'll leave a link to it in the description of the video. From this point onward, I'm just sort of playing and experimenting with different ways of connecting all of the loops. I wasn't happy with how many edge loops there are in the middle, so I'm trying to reduce the amount right now, and I go a little bit too far with it by the end of this video, actually. My other goal is to have the geometry of the tentacle go in a little bit past where the tentacle connects with the head, because even that part underneath the octopus is still going to bend and squish around a little bit as it moves its tentacles. And in fact, on a real octopus, it's kind of hard to tell where the tentacles end and the body begins. And that's because there's webbing between the tentacles and the suction cups go all the way up to the mouth and the whole thing bends around when each tentacle moves. It's so squishy and formless and it's, it's equal parts weird and fascinating. And as I said earlier, I had intended for this to just be a fun weekend project. So really I'm experimenting, playing around, not trying to take this all that seriously. Which is why I'm doing stupid, ugly things like, like what I'm doing right here. I'm going to end up redoing all of this later once I decide to give the octopus suction cups. And I can hear you thinking, you just said that you want to make it a simple, easy weekend project, and you're going to put a bunch of suction cups all over this thing. I know, stupid. I, I can't even imagine how stupid I was thinking that an octopus would be a quick, fun weekend project. And to be honest, making these videos has taken more time just for the two I've made than all of the work I put into making the octopus. Now at this point I'm just connecting all the tentacles together. This actually made it really easy to UV unwrap the octopus, and you'll see that soon. Um, and that's the end of this video. I'll be working on the webbing between the tentacles next time. So if you'd like to, go ahead and comment, maybe subscribe to my channel, give this video a like. And I've been Joseph, this has been Node Spaghetti. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.